I want to consider this situation where we have an internal hinge in the beam. So in other words, I have a beam here and the beam has a hinge right in the middle of, <laughs> in the middle of it here. And in this particular case, we are considering a uniformly distributed load across the entire beam. But the unusual thing about it is that we have three supports. To this point, we have only considered two supports. And there's a reason for that, and that is that um, if I have three supports, in this particular case, I have a Y force at that support, I have a Y force at that support, and I have an X and a Y force at that support. And that means that there are four unknowns. And with three supports, or sorry, three equations of statics. We have three equations of statics. We have the sum of the forces uh, in the y direction equals zero. We have the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And we have the sum of the moments equals zero. In other words, we have three equations that we don't have to use them that way, but we only, with the equations of statics, there are only three of them. And we can use the moment equation twice, like we've been doing that, and that sort of thing. But no matter how we do it, we only have those three equations. Now, and the problem here is that we have four unknowns. So, how can we solve a problem where we have four unknowns but only three equations? Now, uh, just to let you know, not in this class, but in, in your next class, you will learn how to add another equation, for instance, so that you have four equations and four unknowns and solve it. But we have this internal hinge, and that's going to help us solve this problem. So, in a sense, I'll show you the trick to doing it. But so we can solve this problem just using the, the equation of statics because we have this internal hinge. Now, but just to let you know that if, the, if this hinge didn't exist, we wouldn't be able to solve this problem. And that would make this problem statically indeterminate. In other words, the equations of statics cannot be used to solve the problem, and that would make it statically indeterminate. So we aren't going, going to solve any statically indeterminate problems in this class, but you will learn how to solve them in the future. What I'm going to show you in this problem is how to use this hinge to help us solve it. So, and this is a common, this is a trick basically. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the trick. And then there's also a reason you'll see in later classes, you know, um, that this hinge comes up in, in various instances. So, um, it's not quite as unusual as you might think. In any event, the trick is to draw free body diagrams by making a cut at the hinge. So, in other words, I'm going to make uh, two free body diagrams, one on the left and one on the right. And um, so this is the trick. The trick is to make a cut at the hinge. Now, what are we going to do? But then the second part of the trick is, and I should write, <laughs> um, and analyze the one support side. So we're going to, um, and analyze the one support side. So the, the trick is this. Let's, let me just go through. Make a cut at the hinge and analyze the one support side. So in other words, um, in this particular case, it's the left side because I only have, 
when I make a cut at the hinge, I only have a support at A, whereas if I may, if I look at the um, free body diagram on the right side, I have a support at B and I have a support at C. So in this particular case, I'm going to make the cut at the hinge. I'm going to analyze the left side because I only have one support at A. So um, here is my free body diagram of this. So what I have is I have an AY and I have a V, N, and M at the cut. Now here's the thing. Because there is a hinge, and this is why we can solve this, this hinge does not, re you know, does not resist bending. So M is equal to zero because of the hinge. So I get rid of the so I get rid of the uh, M. <laughs> That's not there anymore. And, um, you know, we can see that N is zero, so we can get rid of that. And all we have is the AY and the V. AY and V. And that's pretty straightforward to evaluate because I simply take the sum of the... Uh, well, I can do it in different ways. I can take the sum of the moments about D, for instance, there's my point D, is the hinge, and you can see I get uh, AY times 3, and this load here is 5 times 3, this is 15, so minus 15 times, since that's 3 meters, this is my 15, and the distance is 1.5 meters. So minus 15 times 1.5. So I can solve for AY by taking the moments about the hinge there. So once I have this, um, well, then I can take the sum of the moments about A and I get my V. So now I take moments about A and I get, uh, you, can, you can read this, I get V. V is negative 7.5 so um, I have 7.5 going upward so I have to re reverse the arrow. So um, then what do I, then, <laughs> then what do I do? <laughs> the, um, now let me make this this little comment about this particular problem. Uh, you notice that I have a symmetric load. I have 7.5 on the left, I have 7.5 on the right. So um, you can also do that in your head <laughs> um, uh, when it's a really simple problem like we have here, which is, uh, uh, you know, uniformly distributed load of 15 kilonewtons uh, going downward, then I have put half on the left and half on the right. But um, so for that simple problem, you can do other do in your head. Otherwise, you know you're better off uh, using the taking moments about the left and right side. So um, now I can complete this free body diagram. So in other words, um, I have this free body diagram on the left and then when I create the free body diagram on the right what do I do? Well I have to be consistent in other words I have 7.5 kilonewtons going up there well these are adjacent free body diagrams so I have to have 7.5 kilonewtons going down there so in other words um, uh, you know it goes up here it's got to go down here <laughs> and on adjacent free body diagram so I now have this free body diagram showing B, Y, and C, Y. And I can now you know, use my look at just this free body diagram and take moments about B, take moments about C, and I can get B, Y, and C, Y. So you can do this at this stage. So here is, you can pause the video. Here's taking moments about B. Here is taking moments about C. I get B, Y, and C, Y. Once I have, so 
once I have them, so there's CY, there's BY, we already got AY is 7.5, and so we put them on our free body diagram. So there's my AY, there's my BY, there's my CY, and now I just follow the normal rules. <laughs> and um, so I go up 7.5, and then, you know, that's 15. So I go down... Well, actually, I don't have to go down 15, and so that's going to be at negative 7.5, and then, you know, I don't have to really pay attention to that hinge, but I did that for a reason. Um, and then I go down another 10, so now I'm at negative 17.5, and then I go up 33.75, and then down 20, and then up 3.75. So... Um, I get my um, shear diagram like that, and then what? Well, I know the slopes of the the slope of that is negative five, and the slope of that one is also negative five. So um, I can write the equations of these lines, and um, the equation this line is easy to write because I know the, the intercept. I know the slope, I know the intercept, so it's simply going to be the equation of that line is v is negative 5x plus 7.5. And <laughs> um, this is an easy one, and I solve for, we've done this a million times, so v equals 0 at x equals question mark, I get x equals 1.5 meters, so I get 1.5 meters for that. And um, and then that means this total distance here is 3.5 meters. Um, it also tells me that this distance right here is 1.5 meters. So um, I can get I can get area one. I can get area two, and then now I have to write the equation of this line to get area three and four. So the equation of this line is, again, it's negative 5x plus b, and I put in at x equals 5, v equals 16.25. We've done this a million times, so. And then I get the equation of this line. And I put in, I, sorry, I solve for uh, when v equals 0, I get x equals 8.25. And so uh, this distance is 3.25, that is... 0.75, I can get area 3, I can get all the areas, <laughs> basically. And that means that I can draw my moment diagram, which is going up area 1, going down area 2, up area 3, down area 4. So, that is my bending moment diagram. And notice, <laughs> the reason I broke, just you don't have to do this, but notice that you know, I, I said that this area and this little area there are equal. And that what does that mean? That means that my moment is zero right there. Well, it should be zero. Why? Because, you know, it's a hinge. So the moment should be zero. So at a, at the, as a check you can make sure your moment diagram is zero right there at the hinge. So that's how, now that's how you handle it. There is... Okay, so what I want you to do... Well, I've, I'll do this one more time here. So let's, let's, let's do this one. Um, uh, we've got a hinge here. And I've got support at A, support at B, support at C. And now I have... Um, 20 kips here, 20 kips there, so what do I do? I make a cut at the hinge, I analyze this part, and again, this is an easy one, so I'm not going to... I draw this free body diagram for this region, and um, again, in this case, I can do this in my head, simply because, you know, I have 3 feet, 3 feet, I have a load in the middle of it of 20. That means that AY is 10, and then that would be 10 going up also. So we can do that in our head um, quickly, or you can pause the video and look at that calculation.
So I have 10 there, 10 there. What does that mean? Now I look at the, at the right half of the beam, and so um, if I have 10 going up there, I have to have 10 going down there. And then I simply solve that. I want to emphasize, I guess, uh, emphasize also that remember that when we draw a roller like that, it really means this. <laughs> okay, so it could be up or down. In other words, this is what, we don't draw that, it's too complicated a picture. In other words, this is the schematic of it, but we recognize that this is sort of what, it look, what, it, what the uh, connection looks like. So I can solve this for B, Y, and C, Y. And um, I get these, you can, you can do this yourself, that um, you would get B, Y is 21.1 and C, Y is negative 1.1. So now there's another way to do this in a sense, if you feel more comfortable with it. I can, in other words, I first make the cut at the hinge and I solve for a y only for instance and then I can take that value of a y and put it into the entire free body diagram so in other words I put the 10 kips there and then I can use the entire free body diagram and get b y and c y so that's another way to do this problem and so um, just be aware that there are different ways to do this and you're going and so if I use this oops if I use this free body diagram, then I'm going to get these equations to get the reactions. So that is the um, uh, that is the trick with getting those reactions. Now, when I draw the shear and bending moment diagrams for this problem, um, I look at this and I can go, you know, I go up 10 for that, over down 20 over until I hit by up 21.1 over down 10 over down 1.1 I can get all the areas and um, you can do that and I get this moment diagram and again once notice that at the hinge the moment is is zero so the hinge is there the moment ends up to be zero and I can verify that by getting that little area there and I know that little area there so um, if you've done everything right you will end up with a zero moment at the hinge okay I'm gonna stop there